Okay, Year 10, welcome back to Lesson 5 of your Speaking and Listening Preparation Unit. And your learning objective today is how do I organise my ideas into a cohesive message? So could you please get that written down in your English book along with today's date? Or if you're doing a Word document, then put that in there. The word cohesive means not only something that's well organised, but something that has a really good flow and sense of structure to it. And so today's lesson is really about organisation, structure and flow. And today you're doing your planning for your actual speech. So last lesson, we spent a lot of time thinking about what could you include? Um, and what you're going to do today is use that information and order it out. What's your most important point? What's your most persuasive point? What's the controversy? What are the arguments and the counter arguments so that you can ensure that your speech is really well organized? All right, so make sure you've got the learning objective written down. As ever, you can pause your video to complete these tasks and then just restart them again when you're ready. OK. So the do now task today, so you can put do now in your English book. And this is all about the purpose of your speech. Now, in our very first lesson, we looked at the different purposes that you can have in speaking, listening. We looked at uh, persuasion, advice, information, explain, entertain, describe, argue. You need to have a reason for giving the speech that you're giving and the particular angle that you're taking and why you're talking about it. So last lesson, we talked about how your speech needed to have an impact on your audience. You might want to change the way they think about something or about something in your topic. You might want to enlighten them, to tell them something that they've never known about before, something completely new. You might want to challenge them. So you think that they might have a particular opinion and you want to challenge that. You might want to persuade them to think or feel or act to do something that's in an agreement with you. You also, in your speech, might want to inspire them. You might want to generate um, a feeling of sympathy. You might want them to feel informed and like they better understand things and the world after your speech is over. You need to decide what the purpose, the mission statement of your speech is going to be. So under your subheading do now, you're going to put a number one in the margin and you're going to write out this whole sentence and then finish it. At the end of my speech, I would like my audience to. What is the point of your speech? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to think? or to feel, or to have fully understood, or to have changed their mind about, or what do you want them to decide that they're going to do now, okay? So you're going to write out this sentence and finish it. At the end of my speech, I would like my audience to. Okay, pause the video if you need to. Make sure you've got your do now task done, and then you're going to move on to task one. So task one today, and it's actually the vast majority of your lesson work for today, is to plan everything that you want to say and to put it in the right order. So there are two sections of your speech that we're going to leave. We're going to leave your introduction, your hook, which we looked at a little bit already with the three different introductions that you wrote. And we're going to come back to that in another lesson. Then we are also going to leave the end of your speech, your kind of big finale, um, where you challenge your audience to remember your speech in some way. So today we're going to write the three, uh, sorry, the four middle sections. So introduction we're leaving. Paragraph two, the next part of your speech is going to summarise the topic. So I'd like you to put a subheading that says, uh, paragraph two, summarise the topic. And then you're going to need to pause the video after you've listened to my instructions so you can go back and look at your previous work. So look at your notes on what basic information your audience needs. 
summarize this and your opinions here. You can use bullet points because this is just your plan. So this is, you've hooked them in with something dramatic, a uh, shocking statement, some statistics, a rhetorical question, maybe an anecdote. The next part of your speech is where you're going to summarize the topic and all of the key information that they need to know so that everybody, you and your audience, are in the same place for this topic. So this is, what do you want them to know before you get stuck into your main opinions? Okay? All right, so pause the video. Come up with uh, six to eight bullet points, please, of what you're going to outline in this section. Okay, pause the video and then restart it when you're ready. Okay, so now you've planned your summary, summary of the topic. You're now going to do a subheading for me, which is paragraph three, set out your first or your main points. So this is your big idea about your topic, why you've chosen to talk about it, why it's important. So what is your main idea? So this would be, and I'm gonna give you an example here about talking about food in the school canteen. In, I've done my dramatic opening, I don't know, there's been a pancake fight in the school canteen, something like that. My summary of the topic is going to be about the size of our school canteen, the number of serveries that we've got, the different sorts of foods that are available, what you can get at break time, what you can get at lunch time. Um, it could be the kind of the variety, lots of information. So that anyone who's listening to my speech who's never been to our school has a clear understanding of what it is. My next section is where I'm going to say what I want to change, you know, bring back Woody's or something like that. So this is the big idea, my first argument, my first big thing that I think is important about this topic. And you're going to explain it and you're going to give examples and you're going to try and use some of your persuasive techniques. So you're going to look at, can you come up with an expert? Can you come up with statistics? Can you write a long detailed example? Somebody, you know, uh, Johnny, aged 13 and his experience. What is it that you can say that backs up supports your main idea? with lots and lots and lots of information so it doesn't just sound like you're going, oh, I think the paninis should be cheaper. Yeah, so you're going to tell a story, give some statistics, give some information, give an expert, think about it really thoroughly so that you can um, explain it in lots of detail. So that's your first and your main most important idea. Okay, so pause the video, plan this out, then start the video again when you're ready to move on. OK, your next section of your speech is going to be your second point. And I want it to be connected to your first point, but you're going to develop it a little bit more. Maybe give some more information, maybe some advice, maybe some persuasion. Maybe you're going to look here at what else could be done. So this is you demonstrating that you've not just got one idea on your topic, but you've got a whole bunch of ideas, okay? And so here you could put in one idea and you explain it in as much idea as you did, in much detail as you did your first idea, or you could have a whole bunch more ideas and you just give little snappy explanations of why they're really good. So pause the video, do paragraph four, set out your second point as your subheading, and Put some bullet points here about what you're going to say next in your speech. Remember, you are arguing your opinion, your ideas, your point about something. OK, off you go. All right. Paragraph five is where I want you to deal with the counter arguments. So this is where you look at all of the ideas and arguments by someone who would disagree with you. So this is where you say some people might think and you could pick out those particular groups. So you could say, you know, you could talk about particular groups or particular individuals that might disagree with your ideas for a particular reason. And you have to give their reasons 
And then you have to explain why your evidence and examples and reasons and your idea outweighs what they have to say. So you have built up your idea, then acknowledged that other people have different ideas and demonstrated what those are. And now you're going to knock down the counter argument. You're going to knock down the other people's idea by showing them that you are right. So this section has a little bit of what somebody else's opinion is and then how you're going to prove that you are right by comparison to them. So this is going to take a little bit of time for you to think about because you really need to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. You need to think really carefully about why someone might have the counter argument. And then you need to work out how you're going to prove that you are right without just repeating anything that you've said any before before without being really basic remember you want to kind of grapple with some quite challenging ideas so again pause the video set your ideas out this is your speech plan okay so you can see paragraph six which is your closing arguments your advice and your final comments is something that we're going to write after you've done your first draft so make sure you've got a full plan you're going to have to email this to your teacher um, in a minute anyway so you need to make sure that you've had an, as much detail as you can in this bit. Then you can move on to the next task, which is just a short task. OK, so it's not a big surprise that I'm asking you to look back at everything that you've planned because you need to be able to speak on your topic solidly for five minutes. Five minutes is quite a long period of time to talk solidly about one topic without repeating yourself, without umming and ahhing, without um, having pauses and hesitations. So you need to have a lot to say. So the last five minutes of your lesson time today, you're going to look back over your work that you've done for your plan and you're going to check that you haven't forgotten anything. So have a look at it, reread it, think about are there any more background details that you could include? Are there any more supporting examples that you could come up with? So say you have two supporting examples. I want you to be able to include three or four of a different variety, a different kind. Are there any more facts and figures, any more opinions, reasons, information, evidence that you could include? And then I want you to look at these two properly, really carefully. Are your ideas really clear? You should have chosen a topic that you have got very specific ideas on where you are arguing that you think something is right or something should be done. Those ideas have to stand out for your audience. So make sure you've explained them really well. Then have you explained really well the counter arguments to your opinions? What are the things that are going to be said by people that disagree with you that have other opinions? Have you explained those really clearly? Have you justified them and then explained how your ideas are better? So I want you to spend the last five minutes of the lesson thinking carefully about how you can add more to your plan so that when we come to write your first draft, you are ready to go. OK, as soon as you've finished your work, email it to your English teacher, please do not email it to me unless I am your English teacher. All right, thank you, Year 10. Take care.